Students from Barspar University have planted light pods in the museum garden to provide a computer-linked display of colour that will ripple and dance to an accompanying soundtrack. Over the last 40 years, Patrick Woodruff has produced lighting designs for an amazing collection of people, including ABBA, Take That and the Rolling Stones. He's lit up Buckingham Palace for the Queen's Jubilee and worked on the opening and closing ceremonies for the Olympic and Paralympic Games. The Hoban traditionally for the last well, for the last three years has put on uh, an installation, a site-specific installation at the museum, all related to light. And the first year was done uh, by Bruce Munro, did a beautiful uh, field of light, I think he called it. Uh, last year uh, was Martin Richmond who did a beautiful maze, a light maze. And this year we're doing something that we call light to light. And it, the, the idea behind it is pretty simple. For many years working with all sorts of people, including the group who are here. Um, I've lit uh, everything from operas to, to events, or the, we did the Olympic Games, a lot of rock concerts, ballet. Uh, and, and there with lighting, you're, you're painting the stage with light, but you're always interpreting a performance of some sort. The only time we don't do that is if we do architectural projects, theatrical architectural projects. But typically, you're... you're uh, introducing the element of light to to a book or a script or a musical performance. And it, it's a very important part of it in some of these, but it is an addendum to it or an interpretation of it. And, and here we wanted to do something that was very site-specific to the Hoban, where it was a very pure form of light, and we call it light to light, where it's literally light in... Uh, um, interpreting light, almost. We, we have a soundtrack composed by Matt Clifford, who's a great English composer, and for that you can put on a set of headphones and hear the, the music perfectly reacting to the light. Or you can take the headphones off and simply enjoy being in this extraordinary magical space and just seeing the lighting reacting. And, and right behind the Hoban Gardens are the, what was the Pleasure Gardens 200 years ago. Kate, 200 years ago, 18th century, where people would come, and I think light was part of it. There were torches, and so I rather like that idea that um, we're reintroducing that that element, that sense to this area. And and tonight is our last night of programming, and tomorrow night we press the button at four o'clock and hope that everyone else likes it. Uh, in, in terms of scale, this is quite a, a minor operation compared to some of the things you've done in the past, which you uh, alluded to, hinted towards earlier. Uh, everything from the, the Rolling Stones to, to lighting up Buckingham Palace, isn't it? Um, we've done both those things, and a lot of the shows we do are big rock shows or big events, often in big arenas or even stadia that hold you know, 100,000 people. But we also do smaller events. We also do theatre shows, theatre productions... Uh, school plays, um, all sorts of things. So, uh, but they're in a in a funny way, they're all the same. The only difference between lighting the Rolling Stones or or a small theatre show to an audience of a hundred people um, is simply the size of the space that you're working with. But everything else is the same. You still have to put together a budget. You still have to put together a team. You still have to interpret whatever it is that you're lighting. You have to rehearse it. You have to program it. You have to put it on. You have to work with the full creative team. So in a way they're all the same. And if I ever talk at a college or, or a, to students, I tell them exactly that, that lighting the Olympics has all the same challenges that lighting their, their school production does. You know, you still haven't got enough time, you haven't got enough money, um, you've still got to get on with the people that you're working with, you're still going to feel vulnerable about whether you got it right or wrong. You know, all those things are the same, just it happens to be slightly higher stakes on something like the Olympics. But this is very different. I mean, this is, in a way, for the first time that, that one is really working for oneself and, and you know, um, I become the arbiter of whether I think it's any good or not. Whereas typically I'm working for a client of some sort, it could be a government or a king or a director or a producer or a developer. And this is very different and I, I rather like it. Well, yes, I suppose in most cases you can sort of run away once you've done it, but you can't run very far this time, can you? Because uh, this is your hometown. That's right, just up the road. I live 10 minutes away from here and have lived here for 25 years. So uh, I love the city and it's nice to be able to, to do something directly um, 
for it and that's exciting and kind of rewarding as well. I can't help thinking, you know, I mean, I, I lived and worked in Bristol for 40 years, uh, much more gritty a city and a city where uh, graffiti has been used to uh, um, give buildings new looks. You, can't and we wouldn't want to suggest that anyone runs around putting the sort of graffiti on bath buildings that you will see in Bristol but what you do in a way is is a way of painting a Georgian city without doing it any harm but helping you look at it in a in a slightly different way yeah I mean it's a very, it's a very nice analogy that and it's a yeah it's clear particularly with the lighting systems that that we use for big concerts where you can literally press a button and change the colour of any light. You can change the position of it, the focus of it, the size of it. And it means that you are able to completely transform things. And I think probably if I was doing in this, Bristol, I'd, in this show in Bristol, I'd do something different because you're exactly right. You know? and, and, but that's no different than choosing when you're doing a site-specific event you're very much reacting to where you are, just as if you're doing a modern opera, it's different from um, more classical opera or baroque opera. Uh, but you can get it wrong, lighting buildings you can really get it wrong and now that we have the facility to change the colour of a building um, th that can be a beautiful thing to do. We're doing some tests at the moment at Wadston for Lord Rothschild and which is a wonderful centre of excellence for lighting. That's where Bruce Munro has his piece this year and uh, and you can, you know, you, it, it's very easy to, to, to put cheap makeup on the, the face of a beautiful grand dame, you know, you have to be very careful about that. And I find uh, that it's a very exciting time for lighting now, you know, all over the world, wherever I travel, I'm seeing thrilling stuff, new technology used in places. But, but you also see people get it wrong, where they just kind of smear light and garish colour on a building that least deserves it. So you have to be very sensitive to that particular building like the Hoban, I think.